Let's talk about an extension of Pythagoras theorem. Extension of Pythagoras theorem. So uh, we know the general uh, statement of Pythagoras theorem. If we have a right angle triangle and if the legs of the right angle triangle are A, B and the hypotenuse is C, then Pythagoras theorem tells us that the following relation holds. It's a very interesting theorem and it has many proofs. If you do not know this one, you should definitely look it up. Now, the problem is this, that this particular theorem holds only for right triangles. Right triangles. So, we want to extend this theorem. We want to extend this theorem to something which is a little bit more general. We want to talk about Pythagoras theorem for acute angle triangles. Acute angle triangles. But I'll let you think about that and talk about Pythagoras theorem for obtuse angle triangles. Obtuse angle triangles. So, uh, this one will follow almost in the similar way. So, let's talk about obtuse angle triangles and how to use Pythagoras theorem for that. So, what, what, what is an obtuse angle triangle? Well, it's a triangle which has one of the angles greater than 90 degrees. So, let's suppose this is the angle and if this is this triangle is A, B, C and uh, this angle is theta, theta is greater than 90 degrees. So we are interested to know where, what can we say about AB square plus AC square uh, and their relationship with BC square. So notice that if it was a right angle triangle, if it was a right angle triangle, then the, there would be equality between these two. So if theta was 90 degree. However, theta is not 90 degree, it's greater than 90 degree. And we want to know, what can we say about AB square plus AC square and BC square? Is the left hand side, the side greater or is it smaller than BC square? What is it? So there are several ways of doing this. Uh, but what I will use is something called the trigonometric, the trig formula which is sometimes called the cosine rule and the reason I'll use this is because this particular rule has a much greater application than just this problem so it will be useful in the long run. Uh, so what is the cosine rule? The cosine rule says that AB square plus AC square minus 2 times AB times AC times cosine theta is equal to BC square. So this is the cosine rule and the rule says that BC square BC square is equal to is equal to the square of these two sides that is AB square AC square minus 2 times those two sides AB times AC and times the cosine of the angle in between. So this is a formula that you can derive, uh, maybe in a later lecture we can also talk about the derivation. But for the moment, if you do not know this, let's take this particular formula um, as a thumb rule. Okay. Now we want to apply this formula in a very special case and we want to look at this particular problem. And in the process we will look into a very spe special case of the Pythagoras theorem and its extension. So look at this problem. It says they find the number of integer sided isosceles obtuse angle triangles isosceles that's important obtuse angle triangles with perimeter 2008. So uh, let's come back to this setup. For the moment we will consider this ABC as an obtuse angle triangle. So this theta will be greater than 90 degree but not only that, we will consider this as an isosceles, as an isosceles obtuse angle triangle. So let's uh, let's put something here. Let's say x. Suppose the length of AB is x, length of AC is x, 
and length of BC is 1. So, if I apply the cosine rule, if I apply the cosine rule in this setup, I'll get, let's use a different color, this is x squared plus x squared minus 2 times x times x times cosine of theta. This is equal to y squared. This is, this is our setup. Now, um, there are uh, several ways of looking at this. For example, am I actually subtracting something from uh, AB squared plus AC squared? Or am I, is cosine theta negative? Is this negative? Because notice, if cosine theta is negative, this minus 2 times AB times AC cosine theta will be positive. So, AB squared plus AC squared plus something will be BC squared, right? However, uh, it, if it is positive, if cosine theta is negative, is, is positive, then we are actually subtracting something from AB squared plus AC squared. So, let's, let's uh, say this in a little bit more uh, concrete manner. Uh, to do that, uh, let's, let's look at the graph of cosine. Graph of cosine. Again, there are several ways of uh, looking at this, but this is one way. So, if you look at the graph of cosine, uh, you will see that from 0 to pi by 2, this will certainly be like this and then from pi by 2 to pi pi by 2 to pi it's negative so from pi by 2 to pi the cosine theta is negative cosine theta is negative if theta is between pi by 2 and pi uh, maybe we can also put a negative so equality sign here yeah sure so um, what does that say? Well, it says that cosine theta, when theta is obtuse, when theta is obtuse, cosine theta is a negative quantity. What does it, what does that mean? Uh, okay, let's use a different board. That means that if we have AB square plus AC square minus 2 times AB times AC times cosine theta equals to BC square if this is the formula and if this is negative which it is if theta is between uh, pi by 2 and uh, pi then this quantity will be positive right negative times negative is positive so what is happening here well you are actually adding something positive to AB square and AC square plus something positive plus something positive as this particular quantity is positive equal to BC square. So if you are adding something positive to get BC square then this much just if you take just AB square plus AC square that must be smaller than BC square right. So if, if you just take AB square plus AC square that must be smaller than BC square. This is precisely what I was uh, saying earlier is an extension of Pythagoras. Extension of Pythagoras. That is if the theta or if the included angle is obtuse uh, then the sum of the squares on two sides is actually smaller than the uh, square on the third side. And uh, uh, you can do an exercise for the exercise for the acute angled case as I said earlier. So now um, with this useful extension of the Pythagoras theorem we can actually go back and apply it in this special case which we are working with. Uh, remember that we have this problem here with integer sided isosceles obtuse angle triangles. So let's use that here. Uh, in fact I'll ask you to pause the video and just try it on your own once. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's uh, draw the picture one more time. We have an isosceles triangle with two sides as x and x. Third side is y. And it's given that the perimeter of this isosceles triangle is 2008. That's what's given. So x 
plus x plus y that's the perimeter and that's given to be 2008 now notice that uh, we can we will directly apply the extension of Pythagoras theorem here that is sum of the square so this theta is obtuse so sum of the squares on two sides is less than the square on the third side so x square plus x square is less than y square which implies that 2x square is less than y square and um, which further implies that if you take the square root everything is positive if you take the square root you have square root of 2 times x is less than y moreover we will apply the triangular inequality so applying the triangular inequality triangular inequality which is sum of two sides is greater than the third side we can say that y which is the third side is less than 2x right that is the sum of the two sides x and x that must be greater than y so we have square root of 2 times x is less than y which is uh, less than 2x in mathematical terms this is a very nice scenario uh, if you are doing problem solving for quite a long time you know that this scenario is a very nice very nice uh, point in problem solving in problem solving you will often want to be in this scenario it's sometimes called the sandwich case sandwich state so you have an upper bound and a lower bound for y which is excellent uh, now you can use this to maybe further your investigation okay let's do that um, again I'll ask you to pause the video at this time and try the problem on your own because uh, this is almost at the finishing point of the problem you should be able to do it now um, okay so let's proceed so we have square root of 2x so we have square root of 2 times x is less than y is less than 2x uh, let's add 2x to both sides let's add 2x to both sides or all sides all three sides and we have x times square root of 2 plus 2 that's less than y plus 2x y plus 2x is the perimeter remember y plus 2x is the perimeter y plus 2x is the perimeter which is 2008 that's given in the problem so this is less than 2008 and that's less than 4x so what we get here what we get here is a very nice bound uh, about x so we know stuff about x from this particular inequality uh, let's break it down so we know that x times 2 plus square root of 2 is less than 2008 and we also know uh, that 4 times x is greater than 2008 so that's I'm writing this particular inequality in two steps I'm breaking it down into pieces so if I divide so let's use the easier one first 4x is greater than 2008 so x is certainly greater than 2008 by 4 which is 502 okay so we understand that x is x must be greater than 502 uh, the second uh, the first inequality gives us x is less than 2008 plus 2 plus square root of 2 now you can use your several approximation tools for example you can multiply by 2 minus square root of 2 uh, both numerator and denominator so you'll get 2008 by 4 this is this is 4 2 square minus square root of 2 whole square which is 4 minus 2 which is 2 so this is 2008 by divided by 2 times 2 minus square root of 2 so this is x is less than 1004 times 2 times square root of 2 minus square root of 2 so if you know the value of square root of 2 it helps if you do not you need to do further approximation but you will find that this is a little greater than 
588. So this is a little greater than 588. So we know from the first one that x is greater than 502 and from this one we understand that x is less than or equal to 588. Remember x is an integer. x is an integer. So we have the following inequality that x is between 502 and 5 it's well 588 point something so it's a little greater than 5 this this quantity here is a little greater than 588 okay so what does that mean that means that if x has integer values which the problem says it does then x can take up x can take up 588 minus 502 that's exactly 86 values that's uh, that's the answer in fact so you can have exactly 86 triangles 86 triangles uh, with the property that it's an integer sided triangle and this is the answer is 86 uh, integer side sided triangle and the triangle is isosceles. Uh, look into the link in the description for uh, more information on this problem and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, keep solving great problems.